In this video, we're going to look at some of the ways the Clippers beat Indiana's various zone defenses on Sunday. On Sunday night, the Indiana Pacers tried to quote unquote junk the game up a little bit with zone defenses or various looks, whether that be a box and one, a triangle and two, all sorts of things. This play here is a start. It's a box and one. TJ McConnell's the one. Everyone else, the other four defenders are in the box. One of the ways to beat a box and one is to flash to the middle, which Marcus Morris Sr. does right here. And Kawhi Leonard is going to pass him the ball in the middle, which puts Demata Sabonis on an island guarding two players on the weak side. Morris makes the easy read to the wing. Patrick Patterson has a nice clean look, look, clean look from three, and he knocks this shot down against the zone. One of the other ways to beat a zone defense is with dribble penetration, specifically to the middle of the floor. As Kawhi Leonard gets the ball on the wing here, the second up top defender in this zone is going to rush over to force the ball out of his hands, and the ball is going to go to Beverly on the wing, who then drives against Doug McDermott, who is the point of attack defender. This allows Beverly to get to the middle of the floor, and the zone defender on the wing has to collapse down, which allows Marcus Morris Sr. to be visibly open and allow Patrick Beverly to get the pass off to him. 36% shot probability on this one. Once again, get the ball to the middle of the floor against the zone. Kawhi Leonard flashes right to the nail. He's going to get the ball from Patterson. As he corrals it, he's matched up against Sabonis, but Sabonis is worried about the drive. Kawhi Leonard is unable to just rise up and fire on a 48% shot probability mid-range jumper. Setting high screens or just the threat of it can also lead to things like this from Patrick Patterson. It stretches the Indiana defense out. The zone then has to account for Luke Kennard in the corner, which leaves Sabonis as the closeout artist against him. But Kennard has a nice look here, and he bangs this three-pointer down. This is a possession that basically went flawlessly for the Clippers on several fronts. Here's the slip of the screen and the pop by Patterson. And look at Luke Kennard over here on the weak side, also setting a screen in the corner, which would have allowed Batum to be free. Patterson could have taken the three at the top, but instead works it to Leonard and does another pick and pop with Leonard. But the key here is Luke Kennard flashes to the middle of the floor and allows himself to find and read Sabonis and get the ball to Patterson open in the corner. Patterson misses this shot, but it's a great look. Once again, just getting to the middle of the floor against a zone creates such amazing havoc for an offense and allows them to get whatever they want. Here, Nick Batum tries to cut against the back line of the zone, but Paul George's pass makes him think that he's trying to stay in the corner. He wished Batum went to the corner. As the ball rotates up the wing, Kennard attacks the closeout, and what does he do? Get to the middle of the floor. This little shot fake catches two defenders, including Sabonis, who's left on an island once again trying to protect the rim. Patterson open in the corner. He misses this, but these are good shots for the Clippers against the zone. Even when you miss shots, as long as the process is good and sound, that matters. Like, that's more important than the shot going in a lot of the times. The process matters. Ball goes to Patrick Patterson against the zone. Top defender in the zone comes over, and because of this, it allows Luke Kennard just to be wide open at the top of the arc. This is an amazing look. He misses it. But these are the types of looks that every team wishes they could get from their great shooters, especially against the zone. Even if you just get to the middle of the floor and you don't receive the ball, Against a zone defense, you are doing so much stuff by just doing that one simple action that it renders the zone null and void. And we see that on this play. As Paul George has the ball at the top working against TJ McConnell and this intense ball pressure by McConnell, who is a good perimeter defender. As George spins, Kawhi Leonard attacks the middle of the zone by just cutting, which takes the wing defender away, opens up Marcus Morris Sr. wide open on the wing. This is a free and easy shot, and Marcus Morris knocks this one down. You know, if you can get great shots against the zone, that just speaks volumes about the ability of your offense to move the ball as a unit and diagnose things as they happen in real time. It's high level stuff. The zone can fluster some teams, but not the Clippers in this game. Beverly gets the ball and attacks this Malcolm Brogdon weak closeout. And by getting downhill, he reads the weak side corner defender and kicks it to Paul George on the wing because that wing did get vacated by the defender. Paul George has a nice look. He misses it, but the Clippers are just getting tremendous looks out here. When you pass enough times to the corner after you get to the middle of the floor, you're also able to get shots for yourself because the defense keeps thinking you're only going to pass the ball from the middle of the floor. And here in this situation, as Kawhi Leonard gets it, Beverly is going to cut right down the middle of the paint. And we're going to see the Indiana defender who was on Beverly run back to Kawhi Leonard. And Beverly settles right in the middle of the zone at the base of the floor, gets the ball from Kawhi, looks to the corner, 
pump fakes Sabonis, who thinks he's going to the corner the whole way. Then Beverly goes up and under and has a nice little nifty finish against Sabonis at the rim for the layup. All right, this is the final play, and it's personally my favorite. Luke Kennard recognizes the big is out on him and decides that what to do here, the best possible course of action is to drag the big out and let the Clippers go against a smaller zone without a rim protector at the back line. As the ball gets to Leonard, Paul George is then going to cut 45 degrees into the paint and do something really smart. He screens both defenders, freeing up Patrick Patterson on the corner. Kawhi makes the great pass. The defender, the big defender, can't get out there in time. It's a free and easy three for Patrick Patterson. The Clippers diced up Indiana's zone to the tune of 12 made baskets in this game.